If you're just casually watching the Sonic 1 Master System Taz, you might get a bit confused when you see this glitch. My goodness. Sonic flies up in the air, goes all the way to the right and beats a level really quickly. Well it turns out this glitch, called the Bank Error Glitch, is a result of years of discovery and testing and hard work from a lot of dedicated speedrunners, glitch hunters and Tazers. And in this video we're going to look at how that works. Okay, now that we've seen an example of this bank error glitch, let's talk about what's actually happening with it. So normally tiles will have an index associated with them, and that's based on what the actual tile is. So index zero up the top there will be a normal tile, and actually most things are normal tiles. Then if you're going to have spikes, you could get hit by them, so they're zero one, and so on and so forth. Lots of things use index tiles, but one really important thing is the spring. So what was happening in that glitch before is the tile was tricked into being a spring tile, but it was supposed to be a falling bridge tile. So let's look at how this actually happened. The stuff that's responsible for determining what these index codes do is this bit of code here. So down the top we have it in raw Z80 assembly code, and then down the bottom is a much more user-friendly reading in Lua. So the assembly code is kind of required to understand this in full, but we're going to use this Lua code down the bottom to step through and see exactly what's happening here. So the really important thing to know is that the master system has banks. And what banks do is they tell the master system what part of the game cartridge it's reading. So it's always reading bank zero, and then it gets one other bank to choose from. And they range from one all the way up to F, like we can see on the bottom there. Now, this tile reading data we can see sets the bank to F at the start. It does that right here. And the reason for that is before we come into this bit of code, the bank could be anywhere at all in any bank. So we want to set it to F because that's where the tile data is actually stored. We need to make sure we're reading from bank F. Now, it reads from bank F in three spots here, here and here, where I've got a ROM read in the code there. So it needs to be in bank F because that's where the tile data is. Now, that's all well and good in a normal frame. So in a normal frame, you have your game code, which runs. And then after that, you've got something called the interrupt, which has to do with drawing the screen. Now, the interrupt happens every frame and it it's always happening, always important. But the game code is usually done before that, except when the game is lagging. When the game lags, the game code takes longer because there's more stuff going on. And what could happen is it could take so long that you hit the interrupt and then all of a sudden you've run out of time in your frame and the game code takes more than one frame to run. And that's what's traditionally called a lag frame. But really importantly, what happens is the interrupt interrupts your game code. Now something really special about the interrupt, just for various reasons, it swaps the bank to bank two because that's needed for the interrupt stuff. But if your interrupt happens anywhere in here, that's gonna cause an issue because your code running will say, okay, the bank is set to bank F because we're gonna read all this tile stuff in bank F. Now let's go on and do that. But then if your interrupt happens somewhere in that range that I've got highlighted there, the interrupt changes the bank to bank two and the interrupt does all the interrupting stuff and then it jumps back to the game code that was running before. But with a key difference that the bank is set to two, not F. Now when the bank's set to two, the game's gonna be looking at data which is completely wrong because it's in the completely wrong bank and that's gonna cause us huge issues reading the tile data. So that's actually what's happening with this glitch. By the interrupt swapping the bank due to a lag frame, that's causing the tile data to get read wrong. So this is a really good application of lag frames and you have to have really, really precise lag timing. If you've heard of a frame perfect trick in speedrunning before, this is way more precise. The game code is normally a few hundred thousand cycles and all this code that I've got highlighted here is maybe like 10 or 20 of those cycles. So realistically, you're looking at maybe a one in 100 thousandth of a frame perfect trick to do this. It's very fair to say that it's not possible to do an RTA unless you happen to get it by accident, which is basically how we discovered this glitch. So now let's have a look at all the applications of this bank error glitch in the TAS. We have this first one in bridge zone, which we saw before. It tricks it into thinking the tile is an upward spring tile. We get a spring roll off it and go all the way to the right to win. The next one is in labyrinth one. Uh, this is very easy to miss, but you'll see when I get hit by this enemy up here, I get a left spring, which gives me a bit of extra speed. Just to the left there to make that jump a bit faster. 
You'll notice a lot of these bank error glitches being paired with enemy damage because that causes a lot of lag which gives us wiggle room to play with getting lag for the interrupt. The next interrupt happens at the end of this boss fight. So after I beat the boss, I'm going to get a right spring to shoot me off to the end level capsule really quickly. And that skips having to do a very slow water walk over to that area. This one saves quite a bit of time. We also get a weird visual screen effect when doing that. The last one happens in Sky Base Act 1. I'm going to get hit by an enemy and then get a spring to the right to speed me up. So there's the hit. Spring off to the right. And that gives me iframes to get through the lasers, but also enough speed to skip a few lightning cycles. That one saves a bit of time because the lightning cycles are skipped. Now, I really can't stress how precise these interrupts are. Tazzing it, it would take me several days solid of tazzing to get each one, and that's because of how precise the lag has to be. You can get it by messing with some rolls and jumping leading up to the interrupt and pausing, uh, but realistically, it's a very hard trick to get. Now that we've seen all the applications of the bank error glitch in the Taz, let's look at some theoretical stuff we can do with it. Now the Taz shows pretty much all that was possible that's useful with the bank error glitch, but there are some fun effects we can get just by playing around and hacking in values for ourselves. So now I've set it to be spikes and Sonic will get hurt by the spikes as expected. We can set it to something else like an upspring and as expected Sonic should bounce up if we do that. There we go. We can set it to something pretty fun, like the bumpers from the special stage zone. So we'll see what happens with that. Sonic's bouncing back and forth on these bumpers and going nuts. One of my favorites is to set the tile value to the falling bridge pieces from bridge zone. Now, if we do that, what we're gonna get is basically we can destruct the whole level underneath us by having the bridge pieces fall out. So there's some bridge pieces falling. They look a bit funky because they're in Green Hill Zone. But basically, as you're walking around, you can destroy the landscape by turning it into falling bridge pieces. Now, in practice, this wouldn't really work like this. So you only get one bank area glitch on a frame and you have to do a lot of work to get it on that frame. But if you could get it on any frame, this is what it could look like. Now, I also really want to stress that each tile on the level corresponds to a certain glitch tile. So if, say, on this tile here, I was able to get it to turn into a falling bridge piece, um, then that tile will always turn into a falling bridge piece when I get the bank error glitch. So all those springs we saw in the Taz, they will always turn into springs. So that's an example of what we can do with the bank error glitch. But there's one really, really exciting one, which is OB for our Solidity Valley. OB is the teleporters from Scrap Brain Zone, sort of. Um, and they're also used for the end of level teleporters. So if I set it to OB, uh, well, okay, nothing interesting will happen because I'm not on a teleporter. But the way these teleporters work is they're based on your position. So if you get a bank of OB and you're on a particular position, this could be the end of level portal. Oh my goodness. Sorry, my mistake. It's the end of game portal. But in this case, it just sends you to the next level. So the way the end of game portal works is it, well, it sends you to the end of the game, which happens to be the next level after the final zone. So right now I'm in the next level and that's because I hit the portal, but there's some funny stuff going on. Uh, the music is disabled. And if I get to the end of this level and finish it, what we'll actually see is that there's no bonus screen. So it's going to zip straight from here, straight into the next level. So while I was really hoping that that end of game portal would be a credits warp or like a game end glitch, that wasn't the case. But what it does do is it skips a level for whatever level you hit it on, and then it disables all the end screens for the game. So it's really exciting if we could get it to work, but unfortunately we can't line up the conditions to make this possible. So as I said, each tile is a particular type of the bank error glitch, and you have to have certain X and Y coordinates for this end of level portal thing to work. And unfortunately, none of them line up such that you can get a bank error glitch sending the tile to OB and get the right X and Y coordinates for the end of game portal. So it's a bit of a shame that that doesn't work, but that's an example of some of the potential you could get with this bank error glitch, and it could get very broken. In fact, if somebody just made a hack of this game that rearranged how the levels were laid out, it could very well be the case that that bank error glitch could make that level warp possible. So that concludes our look at the bank error glitch, which is one of many exciting glitches in the speedrun of this game. 
If you enjoyed this content, then please let me know through the comments or by subscribing to the channel as I have a few ideas for more like this that I can make. Thanks for watching.